meeting to order. Uh, thank you all for attending this morning. This is the FY 2018 Legislative Branch Appropriations Subcommittee markup. I want to thank my uh, colleagues for all their hard work this year so far in building this uh, appropriations bill. I want to thank, of course, Mr. Ryan, who's been a wonderful uh, ranking member and partner as we've worked together in concert in a bipartisan fashion to draft this legislation, uh, including uh, a number of provisions uh, asked for by a number of our colleagues, many of which are in uh, the Democratic Party, I think to show that this is one of those bills that we ought to be able to do uh, in a bipartisan fashion working together. Uh, this bill is about uh, security, it's about capital improvements, it's about transparency, modernization, constituent services, and it's all done efficiently and responsibly as we still spend below the 2010 uh, levels by about 12 percent. So we're still spending uh, way below we at our high point in 2010, uh, yet we are investing in critical services to protect security of members, staff, and the constituents, uh, and making several other improvements that I will outline in my comments this morning. And more than anything, we're protecting the institution of Congress, ensuring that this institution remains uh, for generations to come. Uh, Let's get started then. The recommendation for the 2018 Legislative Branch Appropriations Bill provides $3.58 billion, excluding Senate items, which were historically left to the Senate. Uh, of course, the security of members, their staff, and our constituents are on the minds of everyone uh, over the last week, as they normally are. But of course, with the tragedy uh, and the number of uh, uh, members being shot at, and of course, Steve Scalise, our whip, uh, currently still in the hospital uh, and improving. Uh, we are taking a new, fresh look at security, and there are a number of improvements we've made in this legislation. We'd like to, of course, recognize Crystal Greiner and David Bailey for their heroism that they showed the country uh, and the world, which is what we see every day, the bravery of the United States Capitol Police. And they put their lives on the line protecting the Capitol complex, and it's roughly 9 million visitors every year. Their courage under fire saved the lives of countless members of Congress, staff, and innocent bystanders. Steve Scalise, Matt Micah, Zach Barth, and everyone else on that baseball field today are alive because of them. So we owe it to the Capitol Police to ensure they have the necessary resources to meet their mission in an increasingly polarized climate. And I believe this bill appropriately prioritizes those needs, taking a comprehensive approach to assuring the safety and security, not only of members, but of our staff, and most importantly, the constituents we serve. We address security concerns, both here at the Capitol and in a number of ways. Uh, we add seven and a half million dollars in a new request for the Capitol Police for an increased security posture in the wake of the shooting last week. We have five million dollars to the House Sergeant at Arms for district office security upgrades uh, as well. We've also uh, added, uh, we've also ensured that there are resources available for a planned authorization of twenty-five thousand dollar increase per MRA for the remainder of this year to address members' physical security when they're away from a Capitol complex. And pending an FEC decision, we're also looking at whether campaign funds can be used to continue to support security upgrades at personal residences. I'm pleased with these recommendations and believe they go a long way to protecting members and our constituents, and I believe this is a comprehensive approach. We've also added resources, uh, uh, unrelated of course to the shooting, we've also added resources to enhance cybersecurity as well, as we get millions of threats upon our cybersecurity uh, every single month here in Washington, D.C. Now let's move on to some other important priorities. We continue to hold the line on spending in the House of Representatives. The bill includes $1.194 billion for the operations of the House, which is actually $29 million below the request. Uh, <clears throat> and as I mentioned before, uh, this year, uh, of course, we had an MRA increase of $50,000. We'll add an additional $25,000 for the end of the year, specifically focused on security, and there are enough resources to add in another $25,000 next year or more as well if the House Admin Committee so chooses. And as I mentioned, this is a 12% uh, total below 2010 levels and continues the policy of denying pay increases to members of Congress. We also invest in Capitol Police, as we mentioned, but in general, the bill includes $422 million for the Capitol Police, which is $29 million above enacted levels. The funding level will provide the necessary resources for the Capitol Police to hire additional officers for the newly acquired O'Neill House Office Building and the Rayburn Garage Security Initiative. Uh, we support the nonpartisan uh, Congressional Budget Office uh, and allow them to continue to provide objective and timely economic impact data. And we preserve and maintain our infrastructure by prioritizing critical projects within the architect of the Capitol, including funding for restoration and renovation of the Cannon House Office Building, Rayburn House Office Building Garage Project, the cooling tower at the Capitol Power Plant, and the Library of Congress Book Collection Storage at Fort Meade. 
Uh, we also add a total of $10 million to the revitalization fund to finance major repairs and renovations to facilities in the house for future years. $578 million for the architect of the capital, which is an increase of $48 million over the FY17 enacted level. And of course, the committee sends its best wishes to the architect, Stephen Ayers, for a speedy recovery um, with his recent injuries. Uh, finally, we have uh, some additional uh, priorities which relate to modernization, the copyright process of Library of Congress. Um, we have include new funding for IT library-wide improvements and copyright modernization facilities. Uh, and we continue to demand these modernizations occur across the library and the Copyright Office, noting the abysmal 18-month uh, delay to file a copyright uh, versus the Patent and Trademark Office, which can do this in 48 hours. We continue to want to work with the library to improve their level of service at the Copyright Office. Uh, we continue to fund the Government Publishing Office, the Government Accountability Office at current levels, as well as the Open World Leadership Center. Uh, additionally, just some final policies that we have in this legislation. We increase transparency to Congress. Uh, we expand the House's wounded uh, transparency in Congress by increasing transparency to our constituents. Uh, we have language to expand the House's Wounded Warrior Program to hire veterans to work on congressional staff, additionally uh, over the FY17 level. Uh, we, prior we prioritize the cost-effective expansion of the Child Care Center services here at the Capitol. And we investigate new concepts to improve constituent and community services like improving food facilities for our visitors and donating or composting excess food from the food services themselves and, and exploring the ability to have the readers for uh, house uh, capital tours uh, be done in different languages. In closing, I'd like to thank Ranking Member Ryan for his role throughout this process as well as appreciation to all the members of the subcommittee for their participation in the process this year. I'd like to thank the Ledge Branch staff, Liz Dawson, Tim Monahan and Jenny Pannone from the committee and Joe Ianello from my personal office for their tireless and countless hours working on this <laughs> legislation. And finally, I'd like to thank Chairman Frelinghausen and Ranking Member Lowy for being here today and would like to yield the Ranking Member Ryan at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the opportunity. I want to thank you and I'm glad we both made it through the multiple carousel rides last night at the White House. This night was tough, but our kids made it, go on. <laughs> <laughs> both almost got sick in the process, but that's <laughs> not for public consumption, I guess, but I guess it is now. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, let me just say how lucky I am to have you as my chairman. Uh, you sought my input and made sure that wherever there's room for bipartisan agreement in this bill that we reach it, and I'm thankful for that. Your staff has done the same for my staff, and I want to thank them as well. It's done a great job. I'm going to support this bill. It provides $3.58 billion for legislative branch of the federal government, excluding the Senate. We expect a subcommittee allocation of $4.49 billion to include the Senate, which will bring us to $50 million or $1.13 more than last year. The bill gives much needed budget increases to some of the agencies and offices in the legislative branch, but there are important priorities being neglected. For example, the architect of the Capitol's House Buildings Account and the personnel needs of the Library of Congress and CRS. And frankly, this bill's funding level for the Government Accountability Office, I feel, is irresponsible, with the Trump administration refusing legitimate oversight requests just because they come from Democrats. GAO's investigations and efforts to root out waste, fraud, and abuse are more important than ever. Under the flat funding in this bill, GAO would have an excess of 200 fewer staff by the end of the year. That's the lowest staffing level for GAO since the 1930s we must give GAO adequate funding. Unfortunately, as we were reminded by last week's senseless shooting, we also need to be very deliberate about funding to ensure the security of members of Congress, our staffs, and our constituents who visit the Capitol or our district offices. The scariest part for us is there used to be this impression by the public that we all had security everywhere we went. Now, everyone knows that isn't the case. I support the additional $29.2 million in this bill for Capitol Police and the $5 million increase for the Sergeant at Arms. But we also need more information about the full range of options for enhancing security at our offices and homes, including information about the cost. The Chairman and I have spoken about getting that information. I don't know what the solution is, but it is the responsibility of the House as an institution to protect us all. And this subcommittee needs to make sure the resources are there to keep everyone safe. Finally, even though this is a good bill, we're still budgeting blind. 
The Republicans control the entire government, but they can't agree with themselves on a budget or a plan to adjust the statutory spending caps. As a result, we don't know if approving this bill means we won't have any money left for cancer research, job programs, or fighting the opiate epidemic, or all of the programs that put money in the pockets of working class families. There's still a rumor the majority is considering a giant bipartisan omnibus appropriation strategy which could make all of our hard work, Mr. Chairman, on this bill a waste of time. But this meeting is about our subcommittee's product and as I said, I'm proud of our work. I'm proud to help you in this process. Even though I hope we can make further improvements to the bill, I look forward to the full committee markup in the following week, and I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. And I'd like to now welcome Chairman Frelinghausen to, to the committee, and I'd like to thank uh, him and the committee, full committee staff for working to get us an increased allocation, uh, which we are utilizing very effectively here. Uh, and before that, Mr. Chairman, I'd also like to uh, welcome Mr. Newhouse back to the committee. And of course, our thoughts and prayers will have been and continue to be with you for the loss of your spouse. And uh, know that we're, we're glad you're back with us and, and uh, appreciate your leadership on the committee as well. And with that, I'd like to uh, recognize Chairman Frelinghausen. Thank you, uh, Chairman Yoder. I recognize there are three clocks on the, ro on the, on the, <laughs> on the wall and, and time is of the essence. Uh, th thank you for your leadership, Mr. Ryan, for your leadership. Uh, today, the House continues its appropriations process with the second subcommittee markup of the fiscal year 2018 cycle, having moved the Mil Milcon VA bud uh, bill through the full committee last week, we now turn our attention to the legislative branch uh, bill. Uh, of course, the tragic events of June 14th weigh heavily on these deliberations this morning and are reflected in this proposal uh, as outlined uh, by the chairman. We are, of course, grateful to the Capitol Police performed courageously and effectively on that day, and this committee and I think the entire Congress has continued to explore the best means to enhance uh, their capabilities to provide additional security uh, for the public as well as for us. Uh, like all of us, uh, I look forward to the expeditious uh, markup of uh, this morning and uh, uh, support the bill and appreciate all the work that the committee members have done and yield back. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I'd now like to yield to um, uh, the ranking member of the full committee, uh, my good friend, Ms. Loeb. Thank you very much to my good friend, Chairman Yoder, Ranking Member Ryan, Chairman Freelinghausen, for your work on this bill. Today we consider funding for the operation of our nation's legislative branch. I'll skip some of the <laughs> given the time frame. Let me just say, in the wake of the shooting of our colleague, Pete Solis, and four others, including Special Agent Crystal Greiner, David Bailey, this bill provides a $29.2 million increase for Capitol Police and a $5 million increase for the Sergeant at Arms. For 72 new officers, improve security not only for members, but especially for constituents and staff in our district offices. But while these investments are extremely important, I cannot say that everything in the bill is positive. The Government Accountability Office would receive $568.3 million for FY 2018, $46.2 million less than its budget request. It is irresponsible to underfund the GAO, especially when administration officials have reportedly been ordered not to comply with Democratic oversight requests. Shocking. Yet at this funding level, GAO would have over 200 fewer staff by year's end, undermining its ability to conduct oversight and ensure taxpayer dollars are well spent. My concerns are not isolated to this bill alone. The Republican <coughs> budget is months late, has left the Appropriations Committee with sequester levels that cut $5 billion from defense and the non-defense bills. As a result, we are yet again considering a single bill that funds one part of the government without knowing the top line budget number for any of the remaining subcommittee allocations. This is an irresponsible, reckless path which starves remaining bills of vital resources for education, job training, infrastructure, protecting and conserving the environment and more. Adding to the fiscal disarray, there seems to be no apparent plan to raise the debt ceiling, avoid a default on the full faith and credit of the United States. And yet here we are, late June, 
responding to rumors of budget numbers and a partisan omnibus or minibus that has no chance of becoming law. My colleagues, pursuing a partisan omnibus will only put our nation's fiscal house in further disrepair. I urge the chairman, I strongly urge the chairman to bring your leadership and the White House to the negotiating table and work with Democrats rather than pursue a partisan agenda that frankly has no hope of enactment. Thank you, Rank Ranking Member Lowy. Are there any other members wishing to speak? Uh, hearing none, I'd like to recognize Mr. Amaday for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that the bill be approved and reported to the full committee for further action. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed up, those opposed? The ayes have it. I ask unanimous consent that the staff be authorized to make technical and conforming changes to the bill and report as necessary. It is our hope to be in full committee next week. The subcommittee stands in recess subject to the call of the chairman. Thank you. Good, Good job. Good. Good. Good.